Dave here. How are you? Today on the show, we're going to have a look at tidying up one of these old drawers. Now, it looks okay when we look at it like that, but at the end of the show, it's going to look almost new, I hope. <laughs> uh, also, we're going to have a look at a couple of these little push blocks that arrived in the mail from Gifkin's Jigs, uh, Gifkin's Dovetail, I should say. So it's going to be a kind of a quiet show. It's if you're into a little bit of furniture restoration, as far as the finish is concerned, you may want to tune in. I'll see you soon. Bye. Dave here. How are you? Dave here, how are you? Today is the 4th of June 2023, four days into winter for us down here. Now I know a lot of people will say it's not winter until the winter solstice hits. Well that's another 18 days away. So in Australia we always go with the calendar month beginning of June, this the beginning of winter. Actually the beginning of June was slightly warmer than the end of May. So go figure. All right. Today on the show, you've probably saw, seen in the production at the beginning of the trailer that we'll be having a look at doing some restoration of some drawers. Now I've got two drawers over here. These are from a tall wardrobe that my great grandfather built many, many years ago. And uh, he's quite a talent. I've actually done some restoration on the actual drawers themselves as in mechanical work on them with replacing runners and all that kind of stuff. but. Today we're going to be looking at restoring the finish. Now I know this for a lot of people is sacrilege. They say do not get rid of the patina. I'm of the opposite opinion. I'm sure when Arthur built these that he wanted it to look really nice. He didn't want it to be seen as a relic as he would not have wanted to have been a relic either. Uh, so we're going to clean them up to try and hopefully make them look like new. Also, we're going to do the draw for the uh, giveaway of the TSO GRS 16 uh, PED for DeWalt. Now, there hasn't been a lot of entries in this, but that doesn't matter. And I will give you warning that I will do the draw live, but if the address is not for um, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, or USA, I will redraw it. Now that may happen after the fact. So just be aware that it was stated that it was going to be those areas that we would send to, nowhere else. All right, um, now I may get some flack for that. I'm not sure. <laughs> Put your comments down there in the side. And I also have been speaking to a couple of people saying that they watch the show on TV and they can't find the links at the bottom because you know it's almost impossible on a TV and they can't follow the chat. So if you're in that situation, either have a phone, like a mobile or a cell phone, or have a laptop or a computer as well. As if you want to watch it on the big TV and have it running on the, on the laptop and you can join the chat and you can check the links in the video description at the bottom. Also, I have a little surprise coming up a little bit later on in the show, but I'll wait for Cole to come in and uh, then I'll let you guys know what's happening there. So I think that's about it. We will be using the Sorby Pro Edge to polish the brass on this, the brass handle on this uh, drawer. And also I'll be using Polish Reviver, u butte Polish Reviver. I'm not endorsing them. I'm just saying that's what I use. I do have a link in the video description down the bottom. Now, the reason being last week when I had a little bit of a spit about someone saying, oh, you know, this, someone gave you that car. Well, that was rubbish. And that's, that tipped me over the edge. But a couple of people have said, don't worry about those kind of t turkeys. <laughs> Just go on, do what you've been doing normally. And Cole. <laughs> Wait for his comment. Okay. Um, 
ignore those turkeys and just do it. Give us links or tell us where you got it from. We don't really care. And so I will, I will. There's an affiliation link in the video description for this. And also for this guy here, the Pro Edge, which is a great machine and it's on a massive sale at the moment. So is this. There you go, all of that stuff out of the way. The first thing I'm gonna do is get this drawer up so we can have a look. This is an old Australian cedar drawer front and cowrie pine sides. All of these hand cut dovetails. He was a talent, my great grandfather. Um, I have got Carl Cam up here. And we're gonna be looking straight down on top, which is gonna make it so much easier. So let's go to that now. Push that back just a little. And that's got it nicely positioned. Here we go. Now you'll notice that it's got a brass section here for the key. It's got a brass handle and behind here, it's got a little bit of a dent from where the brass handle's been bumping into it. I don't know how we're going to go with that. I don't want to get rid of that too much. But what I do want to do is get rid of all of this orange peel crazing. <laughs> yes, I arrived. And to do that, I'm going to use this stuff. Now, this is 4-0 steel wool. And this is... Vicky doesn't like me doing this. There we go. I pulled it off because she's cut herself on it. Not on the, this, but on other steel wool. So we have that. We have that. And I have a screwdriver here. <laughs> and while I'm undoing these screws, Cole sent me a text this morning. And uh, <laughs> I was a little bit mean. I knew a little Prezi had arrived in the mail because Cole likes to send me things down now and then. And uh, he said, oh, have you got anything in the mail this week, Dave? And I said, no, no, I don't think I have. And he said, oh, oh, I sent you a Prezi. Oh, did you? <laughs> I'm naughty. And so then he's, he's starting to get really cranky. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to let him go. So he, off he went and did the show. I don't know if he got cranky on the show or not. But I'm a cheeky boy. Oh, I don't want this one to the strip. Ah, oh, come on. Now all of these screws were dressed, which means that all of the slots were going in one direction. And they're all going that way. Personally, I would have dressed them going this way. So it's that, that slot. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. They're all going that direction. Not all over the place, wonky. Uh, I take back what I said about Australia Post. <laughs> all right. Now on the back of these, they've got where they've riveted these uh, holders on into the back of the plate. They're sitting proud. And so he's had to drill some holes into the cedar to accommodate that. Now with this polish reviver, I, you need to give it a good shake. That mixes up all of the secret herbs and spices in there and the oils. Put a brass plate there to cover the the bad spot. I could do, I could do. So I'm going to pour a bit of this onto the steel wool and I'm going to start cleaning. At this stage, it doesn't look like much. Believe you me, a lot of rubbish is coming off. Believe you me. I had school teachers used to say that. Believe you me, brother. <laughs> if they were really trying to enforce, really reinforce what they were saying, I should say. But this stuff is magic. Now down the front here, I'm not going to take that brass off. I'm going to just hit it up with this. Because that would have been a pain in the neck trying to get that little plate out. 
along this rebate here, well, yeah, along the edge of this rebate. So they've got a shaper or whatever, or he's got a hand plane of some sort, and he's gone long wrong there and left an angle. There's a little bit of a dip there. So it's important that we get right into it. And when I finish this, I'm going to show you I have another draw right beside me from the same unit, and we'll have a look at that in comparison. We've got to remember to keep shaking this stuff up. You can't just leave it. You didn't get a bell, Chris. Well, maybe you'll have to just check in the settings that you've activated the bell. Ah, that's looking better. That's some, some new stuff, and look at it already. I'll be cleaning it all and then heating it up again. This is good stuff. This is just from years and years and years of, I don't know, they, there was a, this old, the house that this came from had a fireplace in it and also had a um, stove that was fire or coal in the in the uh, kitchen had a copper boiler in the laundry it, it was another another era so there would have been what I'm trying to get to there is there was a lot of smoke that this would have been exposed to just peeling off a little bit more of this look at it coming up now Now this might be boring as anything for a lot of people, but I love this kind of stuff. And it's, it doesn't take long to do it. Yeah, so regarding these little push block, this present that Cole sent to me, I think that Derek has uh, got the 3D printer running and made up some handles. And then Cole has uh, some of the stuff that he uses for his dovetail jigs. Oh, so nice. Okay, where is a microfiber rag? Give me a second, guys. See if we can clean this up. Hey Pierre, how are you doing down there? Now the whole thing we're trying to do here is not to get rid of the uh, of the finish that's on the drawer. We want to close up some of that um, orange peeling and give it a bit of a luster again. That it used to have. This time, I'm not going to use the steel wool. I'm going to put it neat on. And then I'm going to get a little bit of wax. Doesn't that look magic? I don't 
don't even know if I'll go the wax, so I might just leave it like this. Now you'll be getting a little bit of glare there from the lights in the room, so I'll go to the front camera again. It might be easier to see it. Move a couple of things out of the way. Yeah. So that's tidied it up without making it look like it's brand new, but it's, it's just brought that luster back to it. As I say, with, without making it look like it's a, a bought one. I'll show you the other one in comparison. This is the other one, and it's looking quite dull. Remember, I'll get the other one. See that? And the, uh, the section of the keys going in. Now, I also have at the top here the brass lock down here, so I might take that off. whilst I don't have the handle on. It's a whole lot easier to do this without the handle on. So I'll get the... Um, because we'll polish it up at the same time. Bring this up. Let's see if that camera's going to work. Right. Here it is here. These are a flat countersunk screw. And we could clean all of those up too. I was thinking about using the Yankee screwdriver in here, but I thought, nah, one slip and I'll end up stuffing all of this. It's funny, a lot of people just throw old furniture out. There's some old furniture though. Oh, these are steel screws he's used in the back. Huh. There's uh, some old furniture though I throw out if it's just a waste and just rubbish. But some, a lot of the stuff, why? Why throw it away? Let's see if that'll pop up. It should do. It's been in there a long time. There it is. Look at all this cut out here. Isn't that beautiful? Let's clean the top as well. Let's do this with the uh, reviver. This is just from years and years and years of people opening and closing these drawers. This would have been a main feature in the bedroom. This was before they had built-ins, built-in wardrobes. Back in the day. Look, you know what? I think I'm going to have a look at a bit of wax with that. Why not? What have we got? What do I have here? Uh, I could use this one the triple E or the traditional. Let's go with the triple E. Now, this has got a slight cutting compound in it as well. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, no, I'm losing it all over the place. Move that back there. 
I'm going to give it a try on top as well. You might want to watch this bit. Not, not camera three, David, this one. Now the triple E is a, uh, it, it's called triple E because basically it's got triple E powder in it. In a, in a wax that carries the, the triple E powder. I'm not going to do the edges, I'm just going to do this part. Let that set in a little. I'll, exactly right. Old furniture can be a good source of wood for projects. One thing you might notice is that hole has all of a sudden lost its um, raw timber look. That's nice. I like that. That's, that's got a nice luster to it now. On the top. What I can do now, wax on, wax off. <laughs> yes, okay. All right, next thing we're going to do is have a look at these push blocks. I'll pop this over here for the moment that Cole sent to me. I can do that right there. There they are. Now, the interesting thing about these, he's, this is a large one. So Derek, I think, has 3D printed this for him. Cole's done all this part here. And they're bonded and they have gone on very well. <laughs> There's no visible screws. There's probably a screw underneath here, I'm sure, through this plate into the body, into the handle. And this one is fascinating. This one, I'm sure, is for when Cole is using his router table and he's wanting to get up close to an edge. This has a lean. See that? It leans over. So it's not coming straight up. And so your knuckles and everything are gonna be bumping into the fence. It gives you room to have your fingers out of the way. And I think that's a very clever design. See that? This one, it doesn't matter as much because your knuckles are where this plate is. It's, it, you're not going past the edge of the plate. So I think they're wonderful. Glad you finally make a live video. <laughs> Oh, Marissa, how are you? I'm very well, very well. And the family are all, well, they're family. Everyone's family, no one's family ever has all sails full and heading off towards the, the other side of the ocean. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm trying to say that never at one time is every member of your family going well. It's a very rare occasion. So my mum is still having a hell of a time after this hip surgery, after she broke her hip at 94 years old. They open her up, drive in a new steel joint, ball joint for a hip and everything, and fix everything up, stitch it back up. <laughs> She's not doing too good, but hopefully, hopefully she'll pull through and uh, get into the rehab and start walking again. But at the moment, it's not going right. Um, and then we've got you know, family on the other side of the world, what have you. Life is, is what it is. Anyway, thank you very much, Marissa, for asking. And uh, I'm hoping your pugs are well. I'm sure that they're probably starting to deplete in numbers. Uh, Pierre is going well down there, and Baroness is going fine up in the house. All right. What were we doing? Yeah, that's right. We were talking about these. Now, see that offset? 
That's a bloody clever idea. I like it. And this is the big one. Now, I did say, <laughs> oh, got in touch with me. He said, Dave, have you received the present? I, I gave him such a hard time. What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, put those to the side. Uh, now, we're going to get into cleaning this and also this and the heads on the screws. And then we'll put it back together and we'll do the draw for the uh, GRS16PE D for Dewalt. Looking around, I'll bring this camera over here because this is going to all be... I'll bring that down lower and tip that. And Marissa, you can see where this little guy is now. That's Pierre down there on the, in his bed. He just hangs out in the workshop with me. Don't you, Pierre? Hey, Pierre, you a good boy? <laughs> okay, enough of the dog. So we're going to use the Sorby Pro Edge. And I'm going to use the buffing wheel. So they recommend when you use a buffing wheel, you take the belt off. And that's, a, that's pretty good advice. First of all, I'm going to load it up with some rouge. Now, this is, um, yeah, it's a, it's a polishing block. It's a block of polish from Veritas. I'm not sure what it polishes up to or what its kind of grit capacity is, but we'll turn this on and we'll load the wheel up. You can tell when it's loaded because it's all green. That's got enough polish on it, or rouge. I will do this, I'm gonna do this one first. This is the easy one to do. And you do it underneath. And it does get warm. See that? Bit different how it was a couple of seconds ago, isn't it? Do this bit. It's not looking too bad. Spin this around this way a little bit so you can see it as, as it's actually happening. Time for a bit more rouge. See the wheel going green? Spin it around a bit more. You might be able to see it a bit better there. So not only is the Pro Edge good at sharpening, I love it for this buffing capacity. I don't have a buff. This is the only buff that I've got. And rather than having another secondary tool, I don't really need it.
Okay, that might do me for that one. And we'll get the handle. Have a look at that. That's a mess. Some people would say, no, that's beautiful. Not me, I'm not one of them. All right, let's start here. You've got to be very careful when you get in these areas that it doesn't grab you. trying to find the optimum spot to get in there and keep the rouge on.
That might do me up to that stage. Where are we? Okay, I'm going to read through a little bit. Um, they work for treats for all those little tasks around box making. I see whether I'm taking the belt off. Definitely, definitely. Um, after you polish them, you're going to give them a coat of clear lacquer or equivalent material. Uh, I'm not going to. I still want these to look pretty sexy. So what my plan was, was to hit them with some wax. But with, with the polish, when you polish them on the buff wheel there, It's, that's exactly right, Wayne. I was thinking about that as well, maybe going in with a 4-0 steel wool. But I'm going to go in there with a microfiber rag. I've still got some residue from the uh, TB Newt and all of that kind of stuff and the Polish Reviver. And I think... I think it's going to look good like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Now it takes a little while, but I'm going to put it back on the put these back on the box. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll hit it with some this stuff, traditional wax, just a little bit. As Wally was saying. How effective it's going to be I've got no idea you know it's it's one of those things look what's coming off on the rag that's that's indicating to me that it's um, cleaning cleaning those last little bits off and that looks really nice I think I'll just do this on the handle part where people are going to be touching it and then down to the other end where there's nothing on the rag. I'll do this part first. I guess it might be an idea while you're doing this part to put some gloves on, but don't do it while you're buffing. Just keep, please don't wear gloves when you're buffing. It's just something to grab and pull you into the machine. You know, there's, there's a little bit of dirt on my fingers, but not much, not enough to warrant any panic. One of my daughters was in the military for a little while and they had to polish their brass on their uh, parade uniforms and badges and buckles and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why, considering they then go out in the jungle and in the ocean and <laughs> be filthy dirty. But that's Come up quite nice. This one here, I'll just give this little section here a bit of a rub. Uh, yes, I do have brasso, but I don't. I'm not a fan of brasso because it tends to leave residual all over the place, where the buff is nice and quick, and then a little bit of this wax, I think, does the job quite well. I could go into the corners with that, Chris, with the Brasso, but I don't think I will. That looks nice. Now we're going to do the screws. Now there's a special trick for doing the screws. Called pliers. <laughs> don't try and polish the head of these by holding them. Now I put it all the way down, so it's just the head protruding. Okay, dangerous. The same as Jerry, but I think a little contrast looks nice. The point of polishing buff. Yeah, that's possible. I like it. I like it how it is. So I'm going to put some more polish on. Just a little bit. We'll polish these heads up.
That's the one. He's done. See that? Um, next one. It's only the three that I'm going to do. I'll switch that camera around again. No, not that one, David. Autosol. I use brass and then remove residue with the crevice with the... Right, okay. Everyone's going to have their own way of doing it. Now, one of the important things is, you know, I said at the beginning of the show that he dressed all the screws. It's the same kind of thing when you're polishing the, the screw heads that you, you dress them or you make sure oh, that you have the buff wheel go straight down that, that slot to clean it out. I'll just touch that one up a little. Two to go. And we're there. Look at it before. How rubbish it looks. Look at it now. I'm doing the other side because the wheel will not have contacted it. See, now I've got both sides. One to go. I'll give them a little touch up. Pierre's watching very intently. A little bit more rouge. Yeah, is that okay? <laughs> you being a good boy? Come here. Come over here and I'll give you a pat. Come on. Oh, in my own time, he says. Come on. Come here. Yes, boy. Oh, I like that. Do you like that? <laughs> he does. Oh, you are a good boy. You're a handsome fella. Yep. All right, back up to this other camera. It is super quiet. That Sorby Pro Edge, I have no regrets. It's a great machine. It's a great machine. I love it. All right, now we're going to give these a little bit of a rub. And down the, the middle of that slot. Makes a difference, doesn't it? It's a huge difference. I'm not going to hit these up with wax. All right, now we've got to do the drawer in a minute. We'll do that next before I put this back on the drawer front. I wanted to pick on something that was going to be a pretty easy day for me today because yesterday I had a pretty big day. Um, I was up at three in the morning and I had to drive up the coast, which was 200 kilometers away from my place. Uh, so it's 120 miles up, set up for Vicky because she had other stuff she had to get done. And so I went up on my own. I oh, poor me. Up and uh, set up, and then the markets were you know, not a bad day for winter. Markets are better for us in summer 
because that's when people like to get out and they, the sun kind of makes them feel happier, I guess. More inclined to, to spend a little bit here and there. Um, how old is he? He's five and a half. Uh, I have him on a special diet now, Wayne. He's allergic to beef and chicken. So he's on a, uh, he's on a vet di um, style, hard kibble style food and also sardines. So he doesn't react to sardines. Um, sometimes I, look, this is crazy that I'm talking about my dog's diet. But I will boil eggs and I'll cut the eggs in half and I'll keep the whites because that's full of the protein and I'll give him the yolks. Now, protein is good for you, good for me. It, the proteins are the things that he reacts to. Now, I wasn't aware of that until the vet told me. So he eats the egg yolks and he seems to be fine. I'll show you. Pierre, come here. Come here. Up you come. So when I first got him, he was reacting big time. Are oh, you going to lie down there? You can, People can't see you sit lying down there. You're going to sit up. Okay. So this area here, I could never do this when I first got him. Because remember, he was... And that, that crease there would get wet and get infected. And in his ears, he had a yeast infection when I got him. So we sorted all of that out. And that was from the chicken and from the beef as well. So that's me talking as a lay person. I'm not a vet. But this is from all the stuff that I found out. Then we gave him a couple of shots once a month, which kind of overrode any um, irritation. Like it shut down the nervous system against itching and scratching. So it was kind of to reset him. So we did that for two months. And he didn't like having the injection. So we did that for a couple of months. And uh, now he's pretty good. He, uh, he hangs out. He's a good mate. And he's house and everything when I'm not here. So yesterday he was driving the family crazy. There you go. Get and lie down. All right. So that's, uh, yeah, his coat's in great nick. That's called blue. You know, it's, it's steely gray, but it's called a, a blue coat. Like we have blue cattle dogs in Australia and their coats are very similar to his. So he's blue and also he's got uh, a mix of cream that's come through like a, uh, like a, a brindle almost, a brindle uh, cream coming through. So he's a nice dog. He was an ex-breeder. Uh, and now, like, it would have been hard for him when he first came here. Of course, the week before he was um, dissexed and he had all these problems. <laughs> he arrived here away from all the other dogs in the kennels that he would have been, you know, hearing and everything. And so it took a long time a long, long time to win his confidence over, but now he's great. He's pretty good. I nearly sent him back. You know, I, I'd had it. I thought, no, forget it. Don't want to know about it. All right, here we go. Bringing this back over. That's a beautiful luster. That is so nice. You can see as I'm bringing it across, it's just got that satin shine. It's not a gloss, but it's just so, so nice. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll put the lock back in. I did say I was going to do the draw. Let's do that. Let's do that first. Um, he looks tired. He's always tired. Just... <laughs> Let me see if I can find it for you. Okay, we'll go down to this one here. All right, so here we go. I'm down in the bottom corner. And up here, I can click that on the other screen. And it will pick a winner. Now, remember what I said. If you are not in the countries that we nominated, which was the four countries, Canada, USA, New Zealand, and Australia, it will, I will get in touch with you, find out your address to send it to. If you're not in that country, we'll, I'll redraw it again, because I can pick a second winner if I need to. All right, so a bit of a drum roll. Here we go. It's going through, searching, searching, searching. Jeff Robinson. Now. Jeff, uh, if you can get in touch with me, or I will send you an email. I will send an email to this person here, and uh, we'll take it from there. Location is USA. I'm just reading on the other side. He is in the States. I'll, to prove it, uh, let me see if I can do this. 
United States. There you go. All good. We'll come back to there. So congratulations, Jeff. I will get in touch with TSO and uh, we can get that very generous gift from TSO out to you. All right, let's get started here. Congrats, Mr. Robinson. Oh, doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? I'll move this one over here. You know what it means, though? I have to do all of the draws now. Let's see if that will work. There it is, hip. And around. I think it might be able to go just that little bit more. Yes, I'm fully dressed. All the slots down. Pierre, what are you up to? Come on. Nearly dressed, just there, 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 and there. This one a little bit more, and that one. There we go. All the screws are dressed, and across the top. That looks pretty nice. Now we're going to put the. Doesn't that make a difference? Look at that. In comparison to that one, this one hasn't been done. Look at that. I know which one I prefer. I'll set the drawers on top of each other at the end of the show and I'll show you. All right, let's put the brass handle on. We'll go up to Carl Camp for that one. Making sure that I'm right in the middle so I'm not tempted to twist off. Yeah, it's not a lot of work. It just takes a little bit of time. And I really enjoy just hanging out in the shed. It's my space. And I, the, the worries of the world disappear around you. When you're doing this stuff, it's just very very relaxing and then when you've got the furniture back in the house it's nice to be able to use it and when you look at it after you've fixed it up I'm going to back that off just a touch, a touch to there I'm just finished dressing that I'll spin it I'll uh, go to the car cam, or front cam, I should say. Okay, I'll put this one up. So it'll be interesting to see them on top of each other. So there's the one that I haven't done. And this is the one that just after 
after, you know, what, half an hour or an hour. And when I tip it backwards, you'll notice a difference in the finish on the front. See the, the finish on the front, it hasn't gone past being antique. It's basically changed that orange peeling. So it's it's cut it's cleaned and filled a lot of the all of that cracking. But it's just the brass work on, on its own. It's, it's worthwhile doing. It just looks beautiful. Very happy with it. And turn around sideways. It's a shame the cameras aren't really showing you the difference in the wood. They're not really picking it up. There is a lot of difference there. And it, you can see it a bit there. It hasn't gone to be looking like an Estopol finish, which is like a, a poly finish. It's still got that antique look. And it's, I didn't get rid of that. It's, it's a reviver. It's not a replacer. So it's, I love that stuff. It's just, it feels so much nicer. It's clean. The orange peeling, as I say, looks so much better. And then the brass handle. Chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. Okay, so um, brief moment of sound dropout, are you? Well, the sound is going great here. I don't know why. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. No idea. Anyone else? I think there's a big difference between the two. And it's still got that character. All right, uh, let me see. Eric, my, my sleepy dog just reacted to your whistle. You know, he's gone into don't disturb, <laughs> disturb me mode anymore. Uh, without a lot of work. Yes, uh, nice work, Mark. Thank you, John. Incredible, looks great. Comes up, big difference. Thanks, Eric. Chris, very nice. Um, no problems with sound. Derek, could be local internet, David. I've had to start, stop here in Canberra today on the web. Uh, Steve, had a small dropout when you put the lock in. Okay. All right, Dave, there used to be a product in the States made by Hormophorby called Furniture Refinished. You had a bit of lagging, Nathan. Well, look, it could be from here. It could be uh, at your end of the internet. Who knows, who knows? I'm, I do woodwork, not so much the tech, even though uh, I will be getting a video out soon. You know, I said I was gonna do the, the, the series on the solar situation that I've got here. I'm in the process of talking to someone about batteries on the property. I wasn't gonna do it, but now I'm looking at it all and thinking, you know, it may well be worthwhile doing it because our prices are going to go up by 25% or 24% next month for electricity. And that's huge. So all of a sudden, I think batteries may start coming into a situation where they are going to be a financially viable situation, not just a way of um, storing electricity and saving us pulling from grid powered electricity all the time anyway so that's that i think the show's done we've shown you the gifkins jig push blocks now i don't know if cole is going to put these on his site i think they look great and i would i would jump in and get some if the, other than the fact i think this one's so clever i'll set it at an angle like that if I hadn't had them sent to me, I would possibly buy one. Now, I'm not saying that to race, tell you to race out and buy them. I'm just saying I've looked at that. And there's many times that I've pushed up, pushed up up against the fence on the router table and also on the jointer where that would have been great for the narrow stock rather than have a large push block hanging off the edge and possibly rocking while I'm holding something down. We are going to have the patrons meeting started in, in a couple of minutes i might make myself another coffee or what have you but if you want to jump in and wait i have to let you into the room for some strange reason i don't know what it mucks around all the time but i think that's it look after yourselves be nice to each other and i shall see you next week i've got no idea what we're going to do next week but it might be something interesting it might be something small like this or it might be big again we'll see what happens see you later bye